Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys everything that I have been loving. It has been a couple of months since I have filmed one of these videos, so I have a lot of stuff gathered to talk about today. Share with you guys all the products that I've been loving, update you guys on some recent first impressions, and also I'm gonna be talking about a couple of products that were just total fails for me that did not work out at all, and give you guys some more thoughts on those. So I really hope that you guys enjoy. I just figured it was finally time to update you because I've been testing out a lot of new makeup. So if you guys are curious to seeing all of my thoughts and opinions on these products, what I've been loving, what I have not been loving so much, make sure to keep on watching. So the first product that I wanna share with you guys today that I have been absolutely loving that has been a huge favorite of mine ever since I purchased it, maybe like late August or early September, I wanted to do its own dedicated video. I just never got around to filming it. And that is on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. I love this foundation so much. It's a little hard for me to put into words how much I love this foundation. You guys know me, I am all about the drugstore foundations. I love my Maybelline Superstay. I love the L'Oreal Freshwear. All of those are great foundations, but I think I have finally found my holy grail high-end foundation, and I am so excited about this. The Luminous Foundation is exactly how it sounds. It's a really nice medium coverage foundation. It has a beautiful luminous finish without making you look overly oily or overly greasy or over the top. It is my ideal and perfect winter foundation because I want to look luminous, but I don't want to lose any coverage. I don't want the product to slide off my face. And this foundation gives you coverage. It gives you luminosity and it's perfection. The shade that I picked up in this foundation is 210 Neutral. And I do have to say, I think it is a little bit yellow for me. I was going back and forth between a couple of shades and I decided on this one because it did say neutral but I do think it's a slight bit too yellow it's not too intensely yellow to where I can't pull it off I definitely still can make this shade work for me maybe I'll give you guys a little swatch so you could see the shade of it so here is 210 n right here and it's not pulling very yellow on the hand but sometimes it does look just a little bit too yellow on my face, if you guys can see the shade, but you guys see that formula. It has such a nice coverage, a really nice luminosity to it. I only really have one little tiny bad thing to say about this foundation, and that is just that it doesn't look that great on camera. This is one of those foundations that looks absolutely stunning and perfected in person, but for some reason on camera, the way the light reflects with it, I feel like I look pale on camera, which is strange because it doesn't have any SPF in it. So I feel like I look pale and I also feel like on camera it picks up a lot of the texture that is on my face but I promise you guys if you're not going to be on camera if you just want like a beautiful everyday foundation for the winter or all year round I have been loving this I wear this off camera almost every single day because it also is very lightweight and comfortable it's been like my go-to everyday makeup type of foundation next up I have another favorite product from Anastasia Beverly Hills that I've been using also non-stop on my face Face, and that is the Jackie Ina palette. I have been so obsessed with this. I know I recently just uploaded my first impression and I also have mentioned this a few more times on my channel these past few weeks, but this palette is quickly become my favorite Anastasia palette. I would even say maybe my favorite eyeshadow palette ever. There's just something about this palette that I love using. I feel so inspired when I use it. I have it on my eyes today in combination with the Jeffree Star and Shane Conspiracy palette. I just love it. Anastasia formula is one of my favorites. I'm sure that is something you guys already know. These did not disappoint at all. They're so buttery, rich in pigment and blend like a dream. And just overall, the color scheme is so unique and diverse to me. But you have this really beautiful section here that's like warm browns and neutrals with golds and these really unique greeny shades. And then as you move over, it gets a little bit more bright, a little bit more colorful, but there is just a common 
theme in this palette that no matter what look you do and no matter what color you use, I still feel like everything that I've come up with using the Jackie Ina palette has remained really wearable and just really appropriate for day to day. So just to kind of show you guys some swatches, every single formula is so buttery and smooth and packs so much pigment. And I didn't even plan this, but the four shades that I picked would be so perfect and beautiful in a Christmas look. I just know I'm going to continue to use this palette a lot. This has definitely been the one that I've been reaching for every single day, whether I want something more glam, whether I just want to throw ginger, soleil, and trust issues on my lid for like a quick little everyday eye look. This has just been my go-to and I don't see myself not using this for a really long time. These two new Anastasia Beverly Hills launches just totally have my heart. I kind of wish they would kind of slow down on the launches, but I feel like that's a topic for another video, but I'm sure if you guys have been keeping up with ABH launches, they just keep going, but those two are my favorites. But I have been really loving another palette from ABH that's a little bit older. I wouldn't say it's old, but at the rate that they've been launching, this palette is probably long forgotten by now, but I've really been into my Sultry palette again. I believe I picked this one up last spring. Maybe it came out for the holidays last year. I could be wrong though, but I did pick it up last spring and I've been really into this again. It did kind of surprise me that I've been back into this because all of these shades are very cool tone. But again, the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula is amazing and I just find that I could do so many different looks with this. I have everything that I need. A matte cream shade, a matte black, a crease shade, dark brown, sparkly lid shades. Literally, everything that I personally need for a cohesive eye look is in this one palette. And I think that also is another reason why I've been gravitating towards it so much. So next up in this favorites video, I want to update you guys on Folklore Beauty. If you remember maybe a month ago now or so, I did a get ready with me testing Folklore Beauty and some other new indie and drugstore products. And I have to say, I have still been really liking the two palettes that they sent over to me. So the first one that I have here is is their sunrise palette. I really like this. I have to say this isn't something that I have been gravitating towards or reaching for every single day just because these aren't my go-to colors but I feel like when I want to do something a little bit more fun, a little bit more bright and fresh, these are really great colors for that and also the formula on this palette is really nice. So I wanted to update you guys on those. I have really been liking this. This is what this palette looks like. Again, this is the Sunrise palette. Definitely very reminiscent of like a Huda Beauty palette or something like that. And then I also have the Perth palette, which they sent over as well. This is their 15 color eyeshadow palette. And this one I have been loving even more than the Sunrise one. This one just has all of my favorite shades in here. You guys know I love warm tones. I love wearing blue on the eye. That is one of my favorite, more colorful shades to play around with. So this all in all, I have been really liking. I would definitely say that I'm getting more use out of the Perth palette than I am the Sunrise palette just because these tones are more up my alley. Another product that I've been really liking from that Folklore video that I have been using a lot are their gel eyeliners. This one is in the shade Dark Chocolate and I've been using this a lot. I haven't been into liquid liners or doing wings or anything recently, but this particular liner has such a smooth and creamy formula. It makes application really easy and I also love the chocolatey brown color of this. I will insert a photo of me wearing it right here. I was actually wearing some shades from the Jackie Ina palette as well. I think I was wearing like Ginger and sponsored this green shade and I felt like I wanted a wing and the dark chocolate Folklore eyeliner went perfectly with the look. So the gel eyeliner has been another one of my favorites for sure from my little Folklore video. Overall, I am still really liking the eye products. I tried out the liquid lipsticks a few more times and I have to say like they're okay. At first I thought I did like them, but I'm just not a liquid lipstick person, you guys. I don't think it's anything personal to do with the formula. That's why I decided not to mention them in the fails portion of this video because I don't 
don't think it's personally Focalore's formula. I just can't get back into a matte dry down liquid lipstick. They are just not my thing. I feel like I can make a traditional creamy lipstick last just as long with the right upkeep and using a lip liner and stuff like that. And I won't have to go through the discomfort of wearing a matte liquid lipstick. They definitely weren't the most uncomfortable matte liquid lipsticks that I've ever tried, but I just can't get back into them. They're not my thing. I am all about the glossy lips, the creamy lips. I just don't think those are something that I will still be using. But all the other folklore stuff I am still loving, the palettes and the liner, and I believe that was everything that I tested out from Folklore in that video. I will have my link and my discount code down below for you guys if you want to shop. Not an affiliate code. I won't make any money just so you guys can save some money. Would you guys believe me if I told you I was into a strip lash? I know. So hard to believe. I never wear strip lashes anymore. I have been really into the Kiss individual lashes, but I was shopping at my local Dollar Tree and I saw that there was actually a decent amount of Kiss lashes there, so I decided to pick a pair up for myself and these are the ones that I settled on and I have been obsessed with them. These particular ones that I have been loving are in the style Pixie and they are truly my perfect lash. I do not like when false lashes look fake when they're super thick and heavy looking. I know in some cases and some makeup looks they really call for lashes like that, but I'm very simple with my makeup as you guys can see. This is the type of look that I do day to day and most of the times I don't require a really hefty lash like that and those could also be uncomfortable, especially when the band is thick and the lashes are heavy, but these have such a beautiful thin band. They are lightweight, they are wispy, I don't feel like I have anything on my eyes and even appearance wise they almost look like lash extensions they don't look like falsies that you glued on they literally look so natural it's beautiful so I really have to go back to my local dollar store and see if I could find any more of these typically kiss lashes I want to say retail between like five, eight, ten dollars, depending on what you get, if you get the multi-pack or not, but one dollar for a pair of Kiss lashes, I would buy a ton more of these if they were still available. So if you guys are like me and you are struggling to find a really lightweight, pretty, wispy lash, definitely check out the Kiss Pixie lashes because I think you will enjoy them. Hopefully as much as I do, I've been obsessed. If you guys watched my video about products that I hit pan on, you might know that I hit pan on every single banana powder that I own within a contour palette in my collection. I was totally out of banana powder and I need banana powder in my life. That is a product to me that is so multifunctional. It is so versatile in my makeup routine. I use it to set my eyes, to blend out powders, to clean up my bronzer under my eyes. Eyes. I use it for so many different things and I was pretty lost without it. So when I went to Ulta and I saw that Makeup Revolution had a single banana powder pan, I instantly snatched it up and I've been obsessed with this. So this is the Makeup Revolution Bake and Blot Classic Banana Powder. What I really love about this line of powders is that they have banana light, banana, and then banana deep. So depending on their skin tone, they do have a yellow tone powder for you, which I think is amazing because sometimes banana powders can be too yellow for me so this one was perfect so this is what the banana powder looks like I'm not sure if it's getting a little bit washed out on camera but it is definitely very creamy very buttery and has an intense brightening factor to it which is one of my favorite things about banana powders in particular one of my favorite ways to use banana powders is to actually set down the concealer on my lid before I put eyeshadow down it makes the lid so soft and smooth and eyeshadows have been blending out really really seamlessly on top of this powder and even if you guys aren't in the market for a banana powder but maybe you want a translucent powder or a beige powder or something to match your skin tone this formula overall of the bacon blot powders are really nice I figured today's video would also be a perfect time to update you guys on how I am liking house laboratories by Lady Gaga and you guys did see in my review video that unfortunately I did have some sort of allergic reaction to the eyeshadow. I did go ahead and return that, but these lip products are 
amazing, so amazing. And they've quickly become some of my favorites. So the two that I have here are the RIP Lip Liner in N Point and the La Riot Lip Gloss in the shade Corset. So I will give you guys some swatches. Of course, they are just amazing peachy nudes. This lip liner has been my favorite, not only for just lining my lips day to day, but I've also been wearing this as a lipstick because as you guys can see, it is just that perfect peach. I wear shades like this on my lips all the time and especially with a bunch of different eye looks. This is kind of just like that no brainer perfect lip color for me. And then I've also been using the lip gloss a ton because it's a perfect everyday gloss. But I have to say you guys, it is one of the most wet and juicy looking glosses that I have ever used. There is something about this formula that just looks stunning. I get so many compliments when I wear this gloss and I constantly get asked, what gloss is that? What gloss are you wearing? Because it just looks so juicy and almost glass-like on the lips. It is just a perfect gloss formula. Rihanna's Fenty Beauty Brow MVP has also been a huge favorite of mine. This is the brow pencil that I have in my brows today, and I've also been wearing it in my last few videos. If you guys want to see this like put to use and a little bit more in depth about it, definitely make sure to go check out the brow showdown that I just uploaded here on my channel, where I put the Fenty one head to head with the Kylie Brow Bud. I love the Fenty one. Spoiler alert for the brow showdown. There's definitely not a huge difference, so like I said, definitely go check out that video for more details. I have to say it is very similar to my Brow Wiz, and I think that is why I love it so much. It has a little bit more of a dry formula that really just coats the brows evenly. It's not going to be overly creamy or overly waxy to where I go overboard with filling my brows in. Like I said, I'm wearing it today, and it just has the most beautiful natural finish. And of course, I'm sure you guys have seen, it does have the little brow brush instead of a spoolie which I have to say I still do think I like a traditional spoolie better but the little brow brush is not bad by any means it gets the job done and it's really cute as well I just think I'm more of a traditional spoolie type of girl. So those are all the products that I've been loving and the first impression updates that I wanted to share with you guys. Now I wanna get into just a few products that I didn't love, that didn't work for me. So the first one I already briefly mentioned in the other portion of this video was the House Laboratories Liquid Eyeshadow. If you guys watched that video, then you would have seen that it did give me a really bad allergic reaction. My eyes were swollen and itchy for days and I don't know what it is. I don't know why that happened. I usually have more of a sensitive face rather than sensitive eyes, but I guess there was just something in that particular liquid eyeshadow formula that just triggered a reaction because I have used other liquid shadows in the past. I love these Stila ones. I love the Kylie ones. I've used a couple of other drugstore ones, but there was something about the house laboratory ones that my eyes just did not like and it did not agree with me at all. So unfortunately, that was a fail as absolutely beautiful as the product was it just didn't work out for me the next product that was a fail for me I don't have here either because I did go ahead and return it and that was the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation I'm sure you guys have seen the review for this on my channel as well but this was a total fail for me and I was so upset about it because I was looking forward to it I love her original foundation and I have been into more of a luminous lively look so I thought the hydrating pro filter was going to be perfection for my skin but I just couldn't get it to work I tried so many different techniques of application using less product more product different primers different shades of the foundation I tried working with that foundation for a couple of weeks and it just didn't work for me I found that it was having the weirdest reaction when mixing with my powder and it was almost getting pasty looking on the skin it was almost making me look drier than when I wore the original mattifying pro filter foundation. Basically, it was just doing the opposite of what I thought it would. It did not look flattering on my skin at all. So I did go ahead and return it, which I was upset about. I had such high hopes for it. But I did touch on this in that video. I do think if you guys have very dry skin and you don't have to set your foundation, I think the foundation is going to work for you perfectly. It looked 
absolutely flawless on me before powder, but I'm not the type of person that could go all day without powdering her face. Even during the winter, I have to wear powder or my foundation will just move around. But I have just been sticking to using my drugstore foundation and also the Anastasia Luminous Foundation to me is so much better than the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. I know both of those launched around the same time and to me the ABH one just does everything better than the Fenty one did. And I have one more fail that I want to share with you guys. I thought there were more, but I guess these past few months I've been loving a lot of the makeup I've been trying, which is a good thing, but the last thing I actually have here is the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Concealer. This definitely isn't a total fail, so I'm not gonna go into this and say I absolutely hate this because I don't. I do like it to an extent, but I'm putting it in the fail category because it was overall just a disappointment for me. I don't agree with the claim that this is full coverage. I had very, very high hopes for this concealer because you guys know I love the original Superstay foundation. It's the foundation I'm wearing today and it is my holy grail. I absolutely love it. So I had really high hopes for this concealer, but I'm not obsessed with it. I have to say it looks the best either on its own or on top of the actual Superstay foundation, but on top of all other foundations, this concealer looks horrible. I've tried this on my ABH foundation, my Fenty foundation, my L'Oreal foundation, and it looks absolutely horrible unless it's on top of the Superstay foundation or just on my bare skin on like a no makeup makeup day. And that's just something I'm not into. I don't like makeup products that I have to change my routine or go out of my way to use certain products just to get them to work. Honestly, the only reason that I did keep this in my collection was because I threw out my Target receipt. I definitely would have returned this if I could so I have been using it just on no makeup makeup days if I'm running to class and just want to throw on a little concealer this is the one that I will gravitate towards this was definitely probably the biggest disappointment that I mentioned today all right, you guys, so that is going to complete this video. Those are all of my favorites and fails, products that I have been loving and not loving so much these past couple of months. I really hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts about these and also my follow-ups on the first impressions. I do enjoy doing first impressions here on my channel because I love getting that first reaction. I also love watching other people's first impression, but I do think experience with a product can change over time, so that's why I wanted to update you guys in today's video. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, click that notification bell down below and you will get notified every single time that I upload a new video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and of course, I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.